Hello and welcome to The Right Angle, where we discuss all things writing related. I'm Ellie Kay. You may wonder what qualifies me to give advice on writing. I'm a multi-published author who writes both fiction and non-fiction under three pen names. Under my primary pen name, Ellie Kay, I've hit the Amazon number one bestseller spot in several categories numerous times. I don't say any of that to brag, but to let you know that I am an experienced author. Hopefully I can share some of the knowledge I've gained through trial and error and help you avoid some of the pitfalls I stumbled into. Today, I want to talk about weasel words and weak verbs. Back when I wrote my first novel, Shadowing Stella, I used far too many unnecessary words and lackluster verbs. To fix the problem, I used the find feature in Scrivener to locate the issues, and then I went through and made changes to improve my manuscript. Some of the words we consider weasel words are okay in certain circumstances, but they may make our writing less powerful if we let too many of them slip through. For example, the word that is necessary, but it's often overused and can be removed from a sentence without changing the meaning. In those instances, it presents as a weasel word. Here's an example. It was the same boy that I saw near the barn. Or, it was the same boy I saw near the barn. As you can see in the first instance, the word that wasn't necessary. Read your sentences carefully and remove that to see how it sounds without it. If it doesn't sound grammatically correct without it, leave it. Some authors remove every instance of that and their writing suffers from the loss. Not using a word when it's needed is as troublesome as keeping one that isn't. Very is another weasel word. Instead of saying someone is very pretty, why not say she's stunning? The food wasn't very good, it was delectable. She didn't shut the door very hard, she slammed it. Your protagonist isn't very smart, he's brilliant. The antagonist isn't very sneaky, she's sly, cunning, or devious. Most times we use very instead of finding a more suitable word choice. Look for alternatives. A good thesaurus is a must when writing a book. I use lexico.com synonym function. I do have physical thesauruses, but I rarely use them. An example of a weak verb is the word walk. Instead of saying our character walked to the door, we can say he trudged to the door and you get an entirely different image. It's also possible that he scampered or she floated or she skipped. You get the idea. A stronger verb tells us more about the scene than a weaker one does. Some other examples of weak verbs versus strong ones are he didn't run, he sprinted. She didn't jump, she leaped. Instead of getting into the water, she dove or she plunged in. Instead of getting out of the car, she slid or hopped out. I'm sure you get the idea. Smiled, grinned, chuckled, laughed, and gazed are oft overused words that can be replaced with other actions. I recommend checking out the Emotion Thesaurus for ideas on what can replace those verbs. While it may be advisable to leave some of those smiles in place, it makes sense to add in other verbs that will give us insight into the character's emotions without becoming a mundane. We all have our own weasel words that come up in our manuscripts and everybody's are different. My editor could tell you mine, but she's been sworn to secrecy. <laughs> Seriously though, my overused words are yeah, yes, and okay in my character dialogue, and words like that, just, however, and wondered in my exposition. You'll come to learn which words constitute your list of weasel words. Tools like Pro Writing Aid can help you identify what they are. Word selection matters. It's your writing, so the word choice is entirely up to you in the end. You can get a copy of my list of weasel words and weak verbs by clicking on the link in the description. Keep on writing and I'll see you in the next episode of The Right Angle. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.